Even though the government meant to give much relief to exporters of services by allowing refund of input tax credit, the reality on ground was starting different. Legal and procedural impediments led to denial of these refunds. But there now seems to be a ray of hope as the Bombay High Court direction to the IT department to look at credit claims afresh is expected to bring in much clarity. Avantika takes us through the case so far. The contention over input tax refunds on export of services has kept the finance and the commerce ministries at loggerheads, even while exporters themselves claimed that the lack of clarity was a major hurdle, there was little that was done to redress the issue. But finally, the judiciary has come to India Inc's rescue. In a significant order pertaining to BNP Paribas, the Bombay High Court has set aside the Service Tax Department's order and has directed the IT department to pass fresh orders with regard to issuing input tax credit claims that had been previously denied. High Court remanded the matter back to the original adjudicating authority, saying that you need to relook as to why these claims, I mean, on what footing have you disallowed these claims? whereas similar claims have been allowed by you in the past. So typically it's a fact-driven case and if the facts are similar in say all those 10 cases, they should be allowed refund of all those 10 cases. Now, companies are approaching high court and they have filed petitions before various high court, jurisdictional high courts simply because they believe that this may result in a faster uh, relief to them. Prior to the Bombay High Court order was an equally significant order from the SESTAT that perhaps gave way for the favourable verdict for BNP Paribas. On August 24th, in a matter pertaining to a company called Paul Merchant, the tribunal held that companies that export services would not be liable to pay service tax. So now that companies are exempt from service tax, this meant that they would now be eligible to big ticket refunds on their input tax. But experts believe, despite valid grounds, these claims were being denied. Large number of disputes uh, typically were where department sought to disallow credits on some of the technical or procedural aspects. So typically your invoice may not be the registration number of the service provider, it may not be having a date, it may not mention the category of taxable services. And that is where judiciary has taken a lenient view. And there are a large number of cases where they have said that a substantive benefit which is prescribed under the law should not be merely disallowed on technical grounds. So typically those no disputes are still pending and they are in very large number and a huge amount is blocked in refund claims with the service tax department. But with relief coming in from SESTAT and the Bombay High Court, the Indian companies may perhaps look forward for some relief. Goodwill comes under the definition of asset and depreciation can be claimed on it. This ruling of the Supreme Court clarified different stance adopted by different lower courts. And now the new rule laid down by the Apex Court is applied by the Bombay High Court for the first time. Avantika tells us more. In its order dated the August 24th, the Supreme Court laid to rest a very contentious issue pertaining to depreciation on goodwill. And it was a shot in the arm for m &A activity. In a matter pertaining to SMIFS securities, the Supreme Court held that goodwill would be eligible for depreciation. As we reported earlier, this Supreme Court order has set a strong precedent and opened the floodgates for other companies. Now, in a recent order, the Bombay High Court has applied the Apex Code Directive. Right since the inception of the Income Tax Act in 1922, for 65 years, uh, the position of law has been fairly balanced in the sense if someone sold his goodwill there was no capital gains tax on it and the one who acquired the goodwill would not get depreciation on it. This position lasted for 65 years from 1922 to 1987. In 1988 the law was amended and goodwill became taxable. From 1988 to 1997. For 10 years, there was an imbalance. That is, if somebody sold his goodwill, he would have to pay tax on it. But the one who acquired the goodwill could not claim depreciation on it. In 1998, 
the law was further amended, wherein Section 32 was amended to provide that intangible assets such as know-how, patents, trademarks and copyrights and also business or commercial rights of a similar nature were held to be depreciable. Thereafter, the taxpayer would argue that goodwill is a business or commercial right in respect of which depreciation is allowable. On the other hand, the department would say, no, it is not a depreciable asset. This litigation has gone on for about 15 years from 1997-98. And after 15 years, with several conflicting views of several benches of the tribunal, this Supreme Court judgment has come as a breath of fresh air. The Supreme Court had held that goodwill is an asset that is eligible for tax depreciation. The Supreme Court also laid emphasis to put some clarity on what assets come under the broad framework of intangible assets. The order states that the expression asset shall mean an intangible asset such as know-how, patents, copyrights, trademarks, etc. Therefore, goodwill is an asset and depreciation can be claimed on it. Let's say the reputation, the business reputation of the company, the brand value, the good customer relationships, the good employee relationships, uh, the market share, locational advantages, all these collectively put together really represent the goodwill of a company. The ability to now claim depreciation on goodwill will certainly bring cheer for companies that are looking at m &A activity. Because there was an anomaly in the law whether goodwill is depreciable or not, there was a tendency to overvalue the assets. So let us say the purchaser of a going concern was paying an extra amount for goodwill he would prefer to show that extra amount as payment for a tangible asset or intangible assets such as trademarks, etc. He would, he would avoid to show it as goodwill. Now, with this judgment, you know, the, the taxpayer will tend to be more honest and you know, come out and say that yes, he is paying for that goodwill. The, the purchaser of a particular going concern will factor into account the depreciation he would claim in respect of the depreciation in respect of the goodwill, and this would, would encourage the MA activity in India. Well, that's all we have for the show this week, but do send us your feedback and our email address and Twitter handle is flashing on your screen right now. And of course, no courtroom diary this week as courts to remain shut next week for Diwali. But we will be back next week with more. Until then, goodbye and a very happy Deepavali from the courtroom team.